Ladies, gentlemen, and dark crusaders of all ages, when it comes to a Souls-like game, there are few, if any, things more important to actually find and pick up yourself than weapons. No matter what type of build or playstyle you are going for in this game, you will of course be using some sort of weapons to back it up and cement it as a full playstyle. After all, even casters cannot cast spells forever. Mana has a limit. That said, there are a ton of weapons in Lords of the Fallen, a good portion of them are missable as well, and a good portion of those are interesting for one reason or another or just uniquely suited to a specific kind of build that might just fit what you're looking for. So today we're going to go over another 10 weapons that you can find for yourself in Lords of the Fallen, this time focusing on the sort of mid-game section of Lower Kalrath level up to just past the end of the Cistern level. I'll be showing the items in progression order as well, so if you're trying to avoid spoilers, you can just watch up until the point that you're at and you see new things, and then you can just come back for the rest later. Without further ado then, first up we have the Anvil Hammer. Double D minus scaling on strength and agility, but this thing has in insanely high base damage, especially considering how early you can actually find it, and, well, how early you can use it as a stat requirement to even wield it are quite easy for a strength-focused build. Also, it's just sort of an anvil on a stick. How on earth did anyone not want to have an anvil on a stick? As far as how to get it then, firstly you need the Pilgrim's Purge Key, which you can purchase from Captain Stormond in Skyrest Bridge. Then from the Vestige of Blind Agatha in Pilgrim's Perch, there will be a door behind you that opens using the key in question. This leads to a higher level area with enemies that will absolutely beat you up, so I'd mostly just recommend running through here at max speed. Eventually you'll wrap around outside, then back in to wind up at a flower bed next to a ladder. From here, if you head up the ladder through the tunnel in front of you, and then up the staircase that will be on your right specifically, at the top of the staircase you will come out of the cave into a larger area, and if you turn immediately left you will find the Vestige of Deodor in the corner. From here, simply go across the way in front, and there will be a hill in front of you that is covered in enemies when you first see it. Either drag the enemies away, or kill them, so that you can get to the body on top of the hill, which will have the weapon that you seek. Second today is Rosamund's Sword. This is a long sword with quadruple scaling, absolutely ridiculous as a concept of course, requiring at least a bit of each strength, agility, radiance, and inferno. Its main damage is split between physical and wither, and it also has 150 frostbite buildup, which is somewhat unique as well. The main specialty of this weapon, in my mind at least, is the concept of the fact that you can infinitely level up in this game. Every stat, though, will have a soft cap, but theoretically a weapon with quadruple stat scaling will have the highest cap if you just pump more and more and more levels into yourself, eventually maxing out all the main stats. So this is quite neat to see as a concept. For getting this one then, as you progress along through the lower Calrath area, you will eventually reach this big upper area with a flower bed and a bridge that requires umbral up ahead. The non-umbral path here leads to a bit of a rooftop area with some items, but if you are in the umbral anyways in this area, you can see the little flower power corpses that you can suck the life out of right here, then one up at the top level as well, to open up the umbral eye on the wall, which lets you walk through to the other side where you can find a nice fleshy loot box in the corner that you can open up to find this weapon for yourself. Third then we have the Sword of Skin and Tooth. This is a grand sword with B- strength scaling, really solid for an unupgraded weapon, but a pretty high requirement of 36 strength to actually wield it. The base attack is pretty decent with the damage of the attack split between mostly physical and just a bit of fire on top too, and also quite notably it has 200 burn status buildup, which is enough to apply burn to most enemies in just a handful of hits, which is just a lot of nice passive of damage. To get this one for yourself, from the Vestige of Num Lydia. If you progress along the normal path, you'll go down some stairs, and then you have to drop out of a hole into a little minefield. Carefully navigate that, and then immediately left of you as you exit is an alleyway with a wall at the end of it that is only accessible in the Umbral Realm. Head inside of here, and then up the stairs, and take a U-turn to find a chest that will contain this sword for yourself. Fourth up is the Serrated Staff. D strength scaling, C minus agility scaling, so semi-quality style, damage split between physical and fire, but this also has a pretty solidly high 150 bleed status on it. You don't often see a number that high on a weapon with the attack speed of a polearm, so that's definitely quite a good combo as a whole, even if the scaling is a little bit less than you might want. To find this one then, again from the Vestige of Numb Lydia. But this time you must have gotten a bit further into the level and gotten a couple of shortcuts unlocked. Go out into the room to the right of the Vestige, then up the ladder shortcut that you can unlock here. Then you want to run across and then through the rooftops to get to the next shortcut that you will have gotten access to after the big burning tree area. From here, just cross over the roof and then down the ladder on the opposite side, continue forwards around the big burning tree in the middle of the area, and then in front of you will be another cracked wall that you can only get through in the Umbral Realm, and inside of there is where you can get this polearm for yourself. Fifth today, we have the Ravager Gregory's Sword. This is double C scaling to start with on both strength and radiance, making it a solid paladin style sword, 30 strength and 30 radiance requirements, so it is quite the hefty investment to use, but it has incredibly high base attack too, split between physical, holy, and wither, giving you good coverage against possible
possible enemy resistances. As far as how to get this one yourself, once again from the Vestige of Numb Lydia, once you have the shortcut ladder that is dropped down immediately left of the Vestige, which happens a bit later in the level, simply climb up and then follow the planks to the left up to the roof of the building. There will be a couple of enemies up here, but if you clean them out and interact with the Impaled Corpse, which will give you Ravager Gregory's Rosary. If you then bring this item to Exactor Dunmire in Skyrest Bridge, he will expand his shop after you take a rest, and the new main item that he'll be selling is the sword in question here. Sixth then is going to be the Fallen Lord Sword. This is a pure Inferno C plus scaling grand sword, big Inferno requirement to wield, damage split between physical and fire, as well as 300 ignite buildup, which is sort of like the fire equivalent of bleed, leading to a big pop of fire once you reach the threshold. This is an awesome weapon for Inferno users, and the first massive sword purely for that playstyle as well. To get this one yourself from that same Vestige of Numb Lydia one final time, the same shortcut we used for the last one as well, head up that ladder and then use your umbral lamp to get back through the door into the tower. In here you want to head up the ladder in front of you and then turn to the left side to go up the ramp. Head left from here to find a scary looking bridge, cross it to enter a flaming building, and then down one set of stairs you can find this sword on a corpse just sitting on the edge of the fire like so. Seventh up we have Rogar's Reach. This is a strength and inferno mixed scaling polearm, C scaling on both which is quite nice, mixed physical and fire base damage with 150 ignite damage on top of that too, just a nice solid weapon and another option for you inferno users who were being a bit ignored in the early game. To get this one for yourself, once you enter the cistern area, which is the big inner part of a large cylindrical tower, this is actually an entire little level here with a number of mini bosses. If you head down the spiral staircase, you will find a little sewer at the end that you can go into, head through here, sticking to the right as much as possible until you see a ladder after the weird teleporting poison archer. Climb said ladder and then take the hallway that is on the right through here to pick up the Adir Worshipper's saw item. You can then bring the saw to Damaros, the inferno selling NPC, assuming that you haven't locked your quest line by this point already, which you absolutely can, and if you do, she will expand her shop to actually include this weapon for you to consider purchasing. Eighth today is going to be the Nahuta Polearm, C Radiant, C Inferno, which makes it immediately one of the better umbral weapons that we've seen so far. Damage is split between physical and wither, and it also has 60 frostbite buildup, so it's actually quite a solid weapon. Going back to the start of the cistern area, if you enter the umbral realm, you will notice during your descent a little bone platform only available in umbral that continues a sort of parkour jumping path up to a nice fleshy loot box. Get over here and open it up. Ideally, unlike me, you would soul flay a bit closer so you don't fall off the platform, and inside of this will be the pole arm that you seek. Ninth then is Marco's Axe. C plus strength scaling and then E for both Radiance and Inferno to scale the wither damage on the weapon a little bit too. The weapon's damage as a whole is split between physical and wither with pretty decent base stats as well. To get this one yourself from the place that we got the last weapon, if you drop down there will be a little mini boss encounter with multiple boosted up wraith enemies. After you defeat these, the only way off of the platform is to walk right up to this fleshy loot box, and inside of it is this axe. And then finally today is going to be the Blacksmith's Pride, an absolutely just insane flail that is basically a pair of lungs attached to a spinal cord attached to a femur, and that somehow constitutes a flail. I love the care that went into making this, even if it is disgusting. It is disgusting in a good way. C plus agility scaling, C plus inferno scaling, so once again, another option for you inferno users. They really sort of loaded up the mid game with a lot of inferno scalers for sure. This also has split damage between physical and wither, and it comes with 60 frost buildup too, because why not? As far as how to get this one, immediately from the vestige of the forgotten guardian. If you head out the door is here, in the Umbral Realm, there is a fleshy loot box directly to the left beside the map of the area. If you open it up, you will find this weapon waiting inside for you. And that just about does it for today, everyone. A nice collection of 10 missable, but pretty solidly strong weapons in Lords of the Fallen, specifically trying to stick to the more middle section of this game. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and hopefully I can help you find a new weapon that you truly enjoy. Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye